Hello, welcome back to another Power Adapter review. This time I will be looking at a brand new Bassius 100 watt GAN 6 wall power adapter with an extension cord. I've seen some good things from Bassius in the past in the 100 watt arena, but also some not so great things, so you never know what you're going to get from them. Join me as I explore this power adapter to find out if it is the new greatest of all time or if it missed the mark in nearly every category. It can't just be something in between, right? How about another average performer? Now that's exciting content. So I've been making these videos for a few years now. Some good things and some less good things. Mostly they're all the same. Power adapter, charger, USB power supply, whatever you want to call it. They're all almost exactly the same. And this video is here to point out some of the technical aspects that might be different for this product versus others out there. If you have questions, please ask down in the comments. I generally respond at least once, maybe not always positively. There's a hidden item in the video. It's subtle and not very interesting. Anyway, if you want to help support the channel, there's links in the description. Patreon is one way to support, and thanks to my current patrons. The Bassius 100 watt simultaneous charging GAN 6 Pro USB power adapter is in a big box. It's also difficult to open. Strike one. Big retail packaging though. I can see they are going for a different market here versus a compact online order product. Has anyone seen these in retail stores? In the box, there's a bunch of things. Mostly a lot of plastic. Plastic everywhere. Multiple layers of single-use plastic wrapped around the power adapter. And even that didn't prevent the very shiny face of the adapter from being smudged on arrival. This is not what I want to find. All companies should be doing better than this. Even the user manuals wrapped in plastic. That's just stupid and I don't like it. Also, none of these plastics are recyclable, so this is just landfill. Strike two. This better be the best adapter I've ever seen or I'm going to be pissed I wasted money on this thing. Oh yeah, I'm going to be very biased from this point forward. If you don't like things going off the rails, tune out. I'll see you next week. This adapter comes with an extension cord. This actually seems okay. It is a 16 gauge two wire cord. The socket actually has protection lockouts for objects that may get inserted into them. Let's test that out. And they're not great. They get stuck a lot. At least it's safer. I am certain these will break and the extension cord will be made useless. I'm not calling it strike three yet though. The usual 100 watt USB C to C cable is supplied with this. New Bass's logo printed on it too. Okay, user manual. This is so confusing to look at. Not only does it not contain modes completely, it just doesn't list specifications clearly. Giant block of text that's not nice. Also notice something here, that with one USB-C output, it oddly doesn't give a power level. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be looking at that, and it's not good. Strike three, perhaps? The power adapter itself is okay. It's a brick, it works. The LED is not too bright. I'd cover it with tape anyway. Flip out plugs, four ports. They did something interesting, maybe? It has one low power USB-A port. I'd still rather have all USB-C at this point. Hang tight for the 145 watt Satoshi review coming soon. But one port that can do five watt only, so good for headphones and watches and things like that. The other USB-A port can do a few more watts, but they've dropped the high power of the USB-A port from the GAN 3 model. The USB-C ports share differently than previous models, and here is where they actually did make a correct claim in the marketing material. The renegotiation is faster. Sort of. The issue I had with it is it is twitchy. It repeated the renegotiation after 10 seconds or so. It had it and then it didn't, but still, it is much faster than the older model. So I think that's the GAN 6 meaning, better USB negotiation. Okay, so once I get this thing powered up, I find that the idle power usage is on the higher side. This is not as good as the GAN 3 counterpart. But the real issue here is that with almost nothing plugged in, like a cable or an unused charger, the power consumption shoots up to over a watt. Multiple watts with just cables plugged in. This is unacceptable. I don't unplug my cable every time from the power adapter, and I doubt most people do, so this is strike three. This one is out of the running for me. They changed things in a way that made this adapter less palatable in some ways. At full load, the efficiency is okay, but it reveals another problem. The DC voltage is low. The ripple was reasonable at least, but the low DC voltage means your device may think it's drawing too much current and will probably back off the charging speed. So there may be a real impact here on charging speed with higher wattage capable devices. This adapter does negotiate for PPS at 11 volts with the full five amps. So there should be no issues with super fast charging on a Samsung phone. I didn't have to get too far with overload on this one since it didn't even make it to the rated power level. Overload happened before 100 watts. Okay, adding a new set of tests here. This is leakage testing. 
or insulation resistance, both with AC and DC signals at several voltage levels. I didn't do a high pot or a dielectric test. The leakage current is the thing that gives you that tingling sensation from certain power adapters when you touch your device. There needs to be a new study on this for just detectable level because it's a lot lower than what I've seen, one milliamp, and these new power adapters are performance wise all over the place. Anyway, this testing is super dangerous and my test setup on this is very temporary, but video must go out. So don't replicate this part. The results of this testing show that this adapter was acceptable on 120 volts, but if you plan to use this on 240 volts, it will leave you tingling. It has good isolation, but it is well capacitively coupled. If you have some suggestions for tests to run with this, let me know. This is far from comprehensive here, just a quick check of the performance, and this one doesn't win any awards. I set my threshold of acceptable at 250 microamps. That might be too low since a lot of devices cannot meet this. The marketing had a few percentages in it, like 54% less mass, 10% better energy conversion, and 15% better response speed. And looking at the weight of this power adapter, it's fine for the adapter itself. It isn't the lightest option out there, but with the extension cord, it rivals a lot of desktop adapters. The physical unit is a bit smaller than desktop style adapters, but it is quite a bit larger than the best in class Anchor Prime 100 watt adapter. Overall, it's average here. It is slightly larger than the older GAN 3 Basius. No idea what part is 54% less mass, but it's definitely not the whole thing. The energy conversion efficiency is lower, measurably. So that's just got the arrow going the wrong way but I don't know what they're comparing to, so maybe an adapter from 20 years ago? It is way faster than 50% at negotiation. It's more like 150% faster. I guess why print these numbers and claims? Let's see how they do on some marketing for the thermals. In terms of thermals, this charger did okay. It certainly gets warm, as all of these do, but the thermals did stabilize to a reasonable, if a little high, number. One of the marketing claims was a temperature rating, and I think they did a very Apple job in making this graph. If you count the lines, it implies the surface temperature won't get above 45 degrees C or so, but in looking at the data, after about an hour, it clearly gets to about 60 degrees. It didn't shut down and was stable after an hour. This is a good result, but the marketing material looks incorrect. I'm changing up the comparison data a little bit, skipping the data and going directly to the graphs. The idled graph shows that this power adapter is reasonable as long as nothing is plugged into it. It is borderline meeting the Department of Energy level 6 requirements, meaning it is okay to leave plugged in for the long term. But the real issue here is that if a cable or low power consuming device is plugged in, the power consumption goes up to an unreasonably high level. On the average graph, this power adapter is a lower class citizen. The efficiency was only around 89% on average and this mostly comes from the poor efficiency at low power levels. It really has a penalty at low power levels that really hurt the numbers. This is only looking at 25% to 100% output levels too, so giving it every advantage, it still isn't great. I know it's only a few percentage points of spread, but this is the latest and greatest, and the cost is high. In looking at the value of this charger, with its new high price and claims, it doesn't have it. It's more expensive, and its performance is not as good in most metrics. The expectation is not unreasonable that a pro-level device would perform at a professional level. Instead, you are stuck with a device that, although works, is not at or exceeding performance metrics established by the same company three years ago. These are different than earlier editions of these charts. I think they make more sense this way. Let me know what you think. If you want the detailed data tables with more advanced metrics like THD and power factor, they will be on Patreon. So, that's about it. Three, four, five, I stopped counting. Strikes, and you are out. This power adapter is not for me, in my opinion. It doesn't function as well as a power supply versus previous power adapters, and then has some other features that I don't think really make up for the performance deficit. Ultimately, it's a power adapter. On the positive, it comes with an extension cord and does negotiate faster, a lot faster. The power distribution makes sense for actual devices being used. So GAN6, for me, looks like it's a no-go. I have two other ones here in this series, and I'm debating even bothering if this is setting the bar. I think I forgot to take my nice pills this week. The main thing here is 3% worse overall efficiency, which looks like it's not a big deal, but when you're trying to save as much energy as possible, it is. Thanks for watching. The Anchor 240 watt adapter is next, finally. That's the hidden item. The stand was in the shot under the robot. Told you, not that interesting. Goodbye.